That's our old American flag. <laughs> She's pretty faded. Ah, Mom's a pagan and she doesn't even know it. Hey people, uh, up on Mount Hope. Brought my gold book. Let's read a little bit. Behold, my brethren, do ye not remember to have read the words of the prophet Zenos? I don't remember that. No. I don't recall there being a book of Zenos in the Bible. Or a mention of a Zenos. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't read his words. Good thing they're in this book. Uh, which he spake unto the house of Israel, but nobody saved his words, saying, Hearken, O ye house of Israel, and hear the words of me, a prophet of the Lord. Uh, for behold, thus saith the Lord, I will liken thee, O house of Israel, unto, uh, like unto a tame olive tree. That's a compliment, I guess which a man took and nourished in his vineyard, and it grew and waxed old, and began to, uh, to decay. You know, I'm going to take this indoors. It's pissing rain on me. We had some nice snow, and then I took some time getting my equipment together, and to be continued, folks. All right, <laughs> chapter five. I got to find some interesting way to do this. Ah, verse four. And it came to pass. <sighs> ah. Stick it back in the snow. Oh, that. The master of the vineyard went forth and saw that his olive tree began to decay. And he said, I will prune it, and dig about it, and nourish it, that perhaps uh, it may shoot forth young and tender branches, and perish not. And it came to pass... that he pruned it, and digged about it, and nourished it, according to his word. And, and it came to pass that after many days it began to put forth somewhat a little young and tender branches, but behold, the main top thereof began to perish. And it came to pass that the master of the vineyard saw it, and he said unto his servant, It grieveth me that I should lose this tree. <laughs> Wherefore, go and pluck the branches from a wild olive tree. Wherefore, uh, <laughs> wild olive tree, and bring them hither unto me, and we will pluck off those main branches which are beginning to wither away, and we will cast them into the fire that they may be burned. Which is a good place to put something if you want it to burn in the fire. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> taking it inside. I'm up on Mount Hope visiting Mom. <laughs> She's watching from the kitchen while I'm out reading the Book of Mormon in the snow and shaking her head going, Book of Mormon? <laughs> Mom doesn't get it. <laughs> it's cool. Wonderful lady, though. All right. And behold, saith the Lord of the vineyard, I take away 
many of these young and tender branches, and I will graft them whithersoever I will. And it mattereth not that if it so be that the root of the tree will perish, I may preserve the fruit thereof unto myself. Wherefore, I will take these young and tender branches, and I will graft them whithersoever I will. Yes, he's repeating himself. It's not me. Take thou the branches of the wild olive tree, and graft them in, in the stead thereof. Now we got a double N. <laughs> A double in, 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 the stead thereof, and these which I have plucked off, I will cast into the fire, as you said before, and burn them, that they may not cumber the ground of my vineyard. And it came to pass. Gotta pace myself. It's thirty drinks. Damn that snow's coming down. I might have I might get stranded out here. It came to pass that the servant of the Lord of the vineyard did according to the word of the Lord of the vineyard. And grafted in the branches of the wild olive tree. And the Lord of the vineyard caused that it should be digged about, and pruned and nourished, saying unto this servant, It grieveth me that I should lose this tree. <clears throat> Wherefore, that perhaps I might preserveth the roots thereof, that they perish not, that I might preserve them unto myself. I have done this thing. Pretty boring, huh? <laughs> Wherefore, go thy way, watch the tree, and nourish it according to my words. And these uh, will I place in the nethermost part of the vineyard. Whither so for I will, it mattereth not unto uh, thee, and I do it that I may preserve unto myself the natural branches of the tree, and also that I uh, may lay up fruit thereof against the season unto myself, for it grieveth me that I should lose this tree and the fruit thereof. And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard uh, went his way and hid the natural branches of the tame olive tree in the nethermost parts of the vineyard, some in one and some in another, according to his will and pleasure. I mean, he was getting off on that. I bet he's a Bitchin' on Easter egg hunts. And, guess what? It came to pass that a long time passed away. And the Lord of the vineyard said unto his servant, Come, let us go down into the vineyard that we might labor in the vineyard. Uh, to be continued tonight. I can't get too plastered when I'm visiting mom. Ew. Mark my spot. And it came to pass
that the Lord of the vineyard and also the servant went down into the vineyard to labor. And it came to pass <clears throat> that the servant said unto his master, Behold, look here, which is the same thing as beholding. <laughs> Behold the tree. And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard looked and beheld the tree in which the wild olive branches had been grafted, and it had sprung forth and began to bear fruit. And he beheld that it was good, and the fruit thereof was like unto the natural fruit. And he said unto the servant, Behold, the branches of the wild tree have taken hold of the moisture of the root thereof, that the root thereof hath brought forth much strength. And because of the much strength of the root thereof, the wild branches have brought forth tame fruit. Now, if it uh, now, if we had not grafted in these branches, the tree whereof would have perished. And now, behold, I shall lay up much fruit, which the tree thereof hath brought forth, and the fruit thereof I shall lay up against the season unto mine own self. And it came to pass... Uh, better slow down, I'll run out of beer. Definitely not going to run out of things coming to pass. That the Lord of the vineyard said unto the servant, Come, let us go to the nethermost part of the vineyard, and behold, if the natural branches of the tree have not brought forth much fruit also, that I may lay up the fruit thereof against the season unto mine own self. Uh. And it came to pass that they went forth whither the master had hid the natural branches of the tree. And he said unto the servant, Behold these. And he brought forth the first that had that it had brought forth much fruit, and he beheld also that it was good. And he said unto the servant, Take the fruit thereof, and lay it up against the season, that I may preserve it unto mine own self. Yeah, it's necessary to repeat that phrase over and over and over again. For behold, said he, this long time have I nourished it, and it hath brought forth much fruit. And it came to pass, we're up to verse 21, kicking some ass. <clears throat> that the servant said unto his master, how cometh thou hither to plant this tree <coughs> or this branch of the tree? For behold, it was the poorest spot in all the land of the vineyard. And the Lord of the vineyard uh, said unto him, Counsel me not. I knew that it was a poor spot of ground. Wherefore I said unto thee, I have nourished it this long time, 
and thou beholdest that it hath brought forth much fruit, and And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard said unto his servant, Look hither. Behold, I have planted another branch of the tree also, and thou knowest that this spot of ground was poorer than the first. But, behold, the tree, I have nourished it this long time, and it hath brought forth much fruit. Therefore, gather it and lay it up against a season, that I may preserve it unto my own self. And it came to pass and he said uh, unto the servant look hither and behold the last behold this have I planted in a good spot of ground, and I have nourished it this long time, and only a part of the tree hath brought forth tame fruit. Behold, oh, oh, uh, tame fruit, and the other part of the tree hath brought forth wild fruit. Behold, I have nourished this tree like unto the others. And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard said unto the servant, Pluck off the branches that have not brought forth good fruit, and cast them into the fire. We get it. But behold, the servant said unto him, Let us prune it and dig about it, and nourish it a little longer, that perhaps it may bring forth good fruit unto thee, that thou canst lay it up against the season. And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard and the servant of the Lord of the vineyard did nourish all the fruit of the vineyard. And it came to pass. that a long time had passed away. <clears throat> and the Lord of the vineyard said unto his servant, Come, let us go down into the vineyard, that we may labor again in the vineyard. For behold, the time draweth near, and the end soon cometh, wherefore, I must lay up fruit against the season unto mine own self. Up to verse 30. And it came to pass, and I'm almost out of beer, and I got a belch. But I can't do it yet. I hate that. And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard and his servant went down into the vineyard, and they came to the tree whose natural branches had been broken off, and the wild branches had been grafted in. And behold, all sorts of fruit did cover the tree. And it came to pass like it always does. That the Lord of the vineyard did taste of the fruit 
every sort according to its number. And the Lord of the vineyard said, Behold, this long time have I nourished this tree, and I have laid up unto myself against the season much fruit. But behold, this time it hath brought forth much tree, and there is none of it which is good. And behold, there are all kinds of bad fruit, and it profiteth me nothing, notwithstanding all our labor, and now it grieveth me that I should lose this tree. I think that's enough for one night. Second night on Mount Hope. Actually, I did pick up another 40, but it's so cold <laughs> that I think I could use a little uh, Scottish uh, antifreeze. Uh, uh, let's see where I left off. Didn't get a chance to do a reading today. It decided to rain, and I had a bunch of chores to do. And we lost a bunch of the snow, and now it's snowing again. <laughs> now that it's dark. So, it's snowing hard. Crazy weather. Verse 33 of Jacob 5. And the Lord of the vineyard said unto the servant, What shall we do unto the tree, that I may preserve again good fruit thereof unto mine own self? A valid question. <laughs> and the servant said unto his master, <clears throat> Behold, because thou didst graft in the branches of the wild olive tree, they have nourished the roots, that they are alive, and they have not perished, because they're alive. Yeah, they are alive, and they have not perished. <laughs> Wherefore thou, thou beholdest that they are yet good. Verse 35, and it came to pass, oh, that the Lord of the vineyard said unto his servant, The tree profiteth me nothing, and the roots thereof profited me nothing, so long as it shall bring forth evil fruit. <sighs> Nevertheless, I know that the roots are good. And for mine own purpose, I have preserved them. And because of their much strength, they have hitherto brought forth from the wild branches good fruit. But behold, the wild branches have grown and have overrun the roots thereof. I never heard of branches competing with roots. Interesting. And because that of that the wild branches have overcome the roots thereof, it hath brought forth much evil fruit. And because that it hath brought forth so much evil fruit, thou beholdest that it uh, beginneth to perish. And it's that bad. And it soon will become ripened. Is that in a good or bad way? We're talking about fruit, but we're also talking about death and shit. Sick. <sighs> that it may 
be cast into the fire. All right, we're meeting, meaning the bad kind of ripened. Okay. Excellent writing. Excellent. Except we should do something for it to preserve it. Verse 38. And it came to pass. I guess I'll just leave the cork off. that the Lord of the vineyard said unto, wait, I said, 38. And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard, well, pretty similar to the last, uh, the other verse, <laughs> said unto his servant, let us go down into the nethermost parts of the vineyard, and behold, if the natural branches have also brought forth evil fruit. Hmm, looking grim. Mm, almost missed my mouth. That would have been bad. And it came to pass that they went down into the nethermost parts of the vineyard and... Fuck it. It came to pass that they beheld that the fruit of the natural branches had become corrupt. Also, yea, the first and the second and also the last, they had all become corrupt. And the wild fruit of the last had overcome that part of the tree which brought forth good fruit even that the branch had withered away and died. Verse 41. Mm. Try not to get smashed. Kind of hard reading this uh, chapter. Ah, and it's a long one. And it came to pass that the Lord of the vineyard wept and said unto the servant, What could I have done more for my vineyard? Behold, I knew that all the fruit of the vineyard, save it were those, had become corrupted. Or these, I mean. Uh, and now these which have once brought forth good fruit, have also become corrupted. Never allow a speck of wildness in. That's what you're saying. So that's how you become a Mormon. Sounds exciting. <laughs> Sorry, I just lost my place. Fuck. The good fruit have also become corrupted, and now all the trees of my vineyard are good for nothing, save it be to be hewn down and cast into the fire. Well, at least that's something. <laughs> be an optimist. Fucking whining, biot. And behold, this last, whose branch hath withered away. I did plant in a good spot. Of ground, yea, even that which was choice <clears throat> unto me above all other parts of the land of my vineyard. And thou beheldest that I also cut down that which cumbereth this spot of ground, that I might plant this tree in the stead thereof. Exciting shit, isn't this? And thou beheldest 
that a part thereof brought forth good fruit, and a part thereof brought forth wild fruit. Woo, look out! <laughs> And because I plucked not the branches thereof, and cast them into the fire, behold, they have overcome the good branches. Kill the evil ones. I know there's not as many as the good ones. Just, they're like cancer cells. Kill them, those doubters. <laughs> they overcome the good branches that have withered away. In unbelief, no doubt. And now, behold, notwithstanding all the care which we have taken of my vineyard, the trees thereof have become corrupted, that they bring forth no good fruit, and these I have hoped to preserve, to have laid up fruit thereof, and against the season unto mine own self, like he said a thousand times before. But behold, they have become like unto the wild olive tree. What's wrong with that? Like a wild olive? I know an olive. She was pretty wild. <laughs> and they are of no worth but to be hewn down. Hmm. Oh, and it grieveth me that I should lose them. I'm getting tired. <laughs> it's late. But what could I have done more in my vineyard? Have I slackened mine hand that I have not nourished it? He sounds like he's been spreading the bandini pretty liberally so far. <laughs> Nay, I have nourished it. Yeah, just spread this book over it. That'll do it. <laughs> and I have digged about it, and I have pruned it. Well, stop fucking with it. Maybe you be maybe you're killing it because you're just got a brown thumb instead of a green thumb, <laughs> a black thumb. <laughs> Jesus, <sighs> leave it alone. And I have dug, and I have. Dunged it, he <laughs> personally, <laughs> and I have stretched forth mine hand almost all day long, and the end draweth nigh. Look, dude, I'm a farm boy. We had an orchard. We did grafting and shit. I mean, amazing shit. I mean. Put a branch of a whole other tree on and get different fruit. Get several fruits in one tree. I mean, that's not miraculous. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, it's like you plant them. You keep an eye on them. You give it what it needs, the orchard. But mostly, you leave it the fuck alone. You prune it when you need to and shit, but mostly you just keep an eye on it. Watch out for infestations and all, but I mean, I'm not constantly digging around it and, and poking at it to make sure you okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, man, I'm running on. I may have to break this in two just because I'm definitely going to have to break this in two. Damn it. I didn't think I was going to do that again. As a matter of fact, I'm going to break it right here, wherever the fuck I broke. So I totally lost myself. Uh, shouldn't have introduced scotch into this. I'm tired. It's like, yeah. It's like two, uh, 2.40. <laughs> I couldn't sleep. I can't sleep up here. It's too quiet. I'm living in the city now. And, I mean, even the crickets aren't making any sounds. All right. This video is done. If you want to find out how chapter 5 of Jacob ends, you know, do the trees make it or not? <laughs> I'm sure you're giving a shit. Uh, I hope you're giving a shit, because I'm going to do the fucking video, you know, whether you're there or not. All right. Peace the fuck out, people. Thanks for putting up with my shit. I know this is goofy-ass bullshit.
And uh, that's why atheists don't bother picking on Mormons. It's like, it's like picking on slow kids, you know? It's like being a bully or something. Now, pick on the Catholics, the Scientologists. Uh, pick on Mormons? I mean, come on. That's like picking apart cartoons for, you know, uh, continuity errors. <laughs> I'm just feeling mean, so what the fuck. I'm going to finish this fucking book one way or the other. Or it's going to finish me. So, peace the fuck out and have a wonderful whatever the fuck it is uh me we ours